My name is Gavin Jennings. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon specialising in the treatment of shoulder problems. This is the third part of a presentation on the clinically relevant anatomy of the shoulder and will cover surgical approaches. I will briefly discuss arthroscopic, then anterior and posterior open approaches. The standard posterior viewing portal is always used to first gain entry to the shoulder arthroscopically. This is located in the soft spot about 2 cm inferior and 1 cm medial to the posterolateral corner of the acromion. Anterior arthroscopic portals are always made in the safe zone lateral to the conjoint tendon to avoid risk of damage to important nerves and blood vessels. The standard anterior working portal for access to both the glenohumeral and AC joints is located just in front and about one centimetre inferior to the front of the AC joint. If the joint cannot be palpated, it can be found directly in front of the soft spot formed at the apex of the arrow shape formed by the clavicle and scapular spine. The delta pectoral approach provides good exposure of the front of the shoulder and glenohumeral joint. It's suitable for many procedures including arthroplasty. It's performed in the beach tear position. After infiltrating the skin, a vertical incision is made. If more of the humerus needs to be exposed, an incision angled onto the humerus can be performed instead. The cephalic vein is identified in the fat strip between the deltoid and pec major and can be taken medially where there's less risk of subsequent traction damage or laterally with the deltoid which removes the need to cauterize branches from the muscle. The clavipectoral fascia is then divided just lateral to the short head of biceps and the conjoint tendon is carefully retracted medially to expose the underlying subscapularis. This can then be divided along with the capsule to enter the glenohumeral joint. At this stage, the main structure at risk is the axillary nerve, which passes back just below the lower border of the subscapularis and over the upper border of the latissimus dorsi tendons. It then passes back through the quadrangular space along with the posterior circumflex artery. Then it curls back around the posterior and lateral part of the surgical neck of humerus on the undersurface of the deltoid. It may be helpful to incise the upper portion of the pec major tendon in order to identify the nerve as it passes over the upper border of the latissimus dorsi. The posterior approach to the shoulder is used for access to the posterior glenoid, labrum and scapular neck, for example when treating posterior instability or fractures. A vertical incision is made from the posterolateral corner of the acromion inferiorly. The exposure is continued between the middle and posterior bellies of the deltoid. The interval between the infraspinatus and teres minor is divided to expose the posterior joint capsule. Care must be taken to enter the correct interval as the axillary nerve will be at risk if the interval between the two teres muscles is inadvertently entered. Other noteworthy anatomical features of the posterior aspect of the shoulder include the course of the suprascapular nerve. This passes back through the suprascapular notch, supplies the supraspinatus, then curves around the spinoglenoid notch to supply the infraspinatus. Thus, if the nerve is compressed at the suprascapular notch, both the supra and infraspinatus muscles will be affected. If compression occurs at the spinoglenoid notch, weakness and wasting of the infraspinatus muscle alone will result. Note also the passage of the radial nerve through the triangular space along with the profunda brachii artery. If you found this video useful, please click the red button below to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Twitter at Shoulder Experts. Many thanks.